Talking crime confessions today, I'm Kyle Aboshi, the uh, investigative reporter here at KGW, and this is John Tierney. John Tierney, the executive producer. Our executive producer, yeah. Uh, John's kind of monitoring your comments, questions, uh, so if you've got anything you want to add to the conversation, feel free. He's kind of watching it as I continue to chat, and that way we can respond to you, but we'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, maybe we'll start off by kind of talking about how this whole series started. Yeah. Um, you know, the idea was we kind of want, follow, wanted to follow up on a really successful story we did on um, home burglaries, mm -hmm. right? Um, it all started out in looking at, at, at home burglars. So we sent a series of letters. This was actually the questionnaire that we sent to um, inmates uh, in prisons around Oregon who had been convicted of burglary. And we asked them specifically, you know, how they broke into a home, what was the first thing they looked to steal, um, did protection signs or security signs work, and we really got pretty good response. Yeah, it was pretty remarkable how many, uh, we kind of sent these letters off to uh, a list of inmates that we'd identified in the Oregon prison system and had no idea how many people would respond, and we were uh, quite surprised how many people both responded and how uh, kind of frank they were, a bunch of them were in their answers. Yeah, some of them actually wrote full letters, which we posted online, and the story is still available online. But what was really interesting is after we broadcast the story uh, over two nights is the response that we got from around the country because we heard from a lot of people, um, crime prevention folks, neighborhood uh, groups, just a, a lot of different um, people around the country really from you know the East Coast to the West Coast looking at how we did the story, uh, saying thank you for the tips is really useful information and passing it along to them in, in newsletters and also just links to the story. So that's, that's kind of where it got us started and we thought, you know, where do we take it from here? Where can we go next to help you prevent uh, a crime from occurring and you from becoming a victim. And so we started thinking about what are some other crimes that, that would really be helpful to people. And, and one of them that came to mind was um, credit card theft, right? Obviously a concern to a lot of people uh, who hasn't had uh, or been notified of possible fraudulent activity on their credit cards. And then also uh, car theft, that was another one that came to mind. And we're actually, we're still looking for other uh, ideas. So if you've got any ideas on where you would like us to see go next, um, certainly let us know. Because what we do essentially is we reach out to people who've been convicted of a crime, who've oftentimes served their, served their sentence, mm -hmm. and you know, want to pay back to the community. They want to give back by sharing their secrets and offering their advice. So um, like I said, the, the first story that we did on this was in dealing with credit card theft. We met with a gentleman named Kevin Hawk who was great in explaining how he carried out this scam and what you can do to protect yourself. Here's a little bit of that piece. You can make thousands and thousands of dollars in one day just by going into one or two stores and swiping a couple credit cards. He was a thief who worked in the shadows, quietly stealing your credit card information didn't know his name and never saw his face until now. My name is Kevin and I am an identity thief. For the first time, Kevin Hawk is sharing his secrets to help you avoid becoming a victim of credit card fraud. They would get it and be like, I didn't apply for this. But by that time, we've already drained the entire account. If we get somebody's personal information, we call that a profile. That's their name, their address, their social security number. We could get an entire list of names and addresses and all that. Corrupt county workers, corrupt DMV employees, people that we've paid off. You know, um, a lot of people that have access to information are corruptible and you can pay them for the information. The main thing that we did is we would go into high-end department stores and we would apply for in-store credit accounts. You can spend the entire amount of your credit line in one day if you want. And so we would do that. We would drain the entire account in one day, then we would go and sell everything for cash. If I had a bartender or a waitress or a waiter that's on my payroll, somebody that I can pay a couple hundred dollars to every week. Um, if they have what we call a big fish, somebody that comes in wearing fancy clothes, pulls up in a fancy car, looks like they have money. You know, um, when they pay their tab, the waitress or the bartender will take a quick picture of the front and the back of their credit card.
you need to protect your plastic, okay? Because you don't know what that person's doing with your card when they go to swipe it. I mean, you need to actually watch what they're doing. I mean, if it was me, I would be checking my statement almost every day just to make sure there's no fraudulent charges. You know, we just keep spending, keep spending, keep spending, and they don't realize it until a check starts to bounce or until they go online and check their statement. They're like, whoa, there's 37 charges for $80,000 that I didn't make. You know, and at that point, it's too late. Oh, I've done, I've done so much harm and damage through my actions. You know, this is just a way for me to tell them, like, listen, this is what's going on and I'm not the only one doing it. Kyle, it was remarkable to hear uh, Kevin in that interview and how frank he was talking yeah. about the crimes he had, uh, had committed uh, and some of the tactics he used, especially right. recruiting bartenders. What, uh, what surprised you most when you were doing that interview? Hmm. Well, I, I'm trying to think of the one thing that really stood out. It, it was one of those interviews, you know, as a journalist, you sit down and sometimes you walk away from an interview you're like, wow, holy mm -hmm. smokes. I mean, that was amazing. And he was one of those interviews where, you know, photographer Gene Cotton and I walked away, we're like, that's nuts. I mean, that was really, you know, something aside of the, uh, of the criminal world we're not exposed to typically. And he really kind of laid it out there. I, I think the one thing that, that we were kind of cautious about in this too is we didn't want to give people kind of a roadmap how to commit a crime. I mean, kind of the blueprints. Mm -hmm. and, and Kevin was completely honest and really laid it out there uh, and was very specific about how he committed some of these crimes. And so we were a little bit cautious about that because we didn't want to put too much information about how to commit the crime out there. I mean, obviously the goal here is to inform the public about how these crimes are committed and then how to prevent it. But again, we don't want to give people a roadmap. And so we thought long and hard about that and kept that portion out of it that where it was really specific. Um, but yeah, just in hearing him kind of walk us through this, it made me realize just how vulnerable you are. And, and once these crooks get a hold of a credit card number, boom, I mean, they are off and running. And not necessarily a credit card number. I mean, it's just your personal information, like he was talking about. You know, he'd get kind of this rundown of people's names, addresses, birth dates, social security numbers, and he was off and running. He'd get these cars going at a major department store, and he'd just go on this spending spree. And to kind of he hear him describe this, uh, it's just, you know, I guess it's one thing to read about it, but to actually hear somebody tell you about their experiences was astounding. You touched on an interesting point that we don't often get a put out in our stories as they air, which is kind of the thought process we go through when researching these stories, mm -hmm. um, conducting the interviews, editing, et cetera, and which is, these formats are cool because we can talk about that. But you know, we do hear that criticism a lot about, well, if you do these stories, you're just giving people essentially the roadmap to commit a crime. Right. And to bring our viewers into the process, you know, we do talk about that, that concern and that criticism. Our general feeling is that, um, listen, these people, you know, these tactics are available, these are out there. We're most informed as kind of credit card consumers and restaurant consumers and whatnot. If we know what tactics people are using, they're gonna find these tactics whether we tell them or not. And in fact, you can go online, do a quick Google search and find a lot more detail than we're ever gonna give people. So the best way to uh, really protect ourselves is to understand what is going on. The thing that struck me from the story was the, uh, was the restaurant and how easy, or the restaurants right. or waiters, how easily, uh, waitresses, waiters, bartenders can be uh, bought off. I think he said, you know, pay people just a few hundred bucks. Right, and they'd psh, psh, take a picture, oh. email it off to him, and, and he'd be off and running. So he said, you know, the best thing to do is to keep an eye on your card, but how are you supposed to do that when most restaurants take your card and go behind the bar or behind the, you know, the host, host stand? Right, and that's, that is the challenge. I mean, I, I think one thing that I kind of walk away thinking is, you know, you go into a bar and you're like, yeah, keep the tab open and you just give them the credit card and you're good to go. I think what I would be more inclined to do is either pay right away with cash, or if you're going to have them swipe the card, boom, swipe it, give it back to you, and then if you're going to go for another round, give, it to the, give them the card again instead of keeping that tab open. That may be one way to protect yourself. And then in restaurants, though, I mean, you know, you're not going to follow the waiter or waitress to the back of the restaurant. Um, although he suggests protect your plastic, maybe do that. Uh, um, that is a tricky spot. I'm not exactly sure what would be the best way to prevent that. One other thing I kind of want to add to, for folks, um, kind of behind the scenes about this all, 
you know, we really debated how we want to present this. You know, you could do kind of the matrixing of the face or blurring of the face and hear their voice. Um, maybe somebody doesn't want to give their name. But we really felt like it's an important element to this that people show their face, they give their name, because I think it, it adds credibility. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the sincerity. Um, but also, you know, these are people who are remorseful. They've done wrong and they want to do right now. And they want to give back to the community and, and help people who they may have victimized and prevent others from becoming a victim. And so really the goal here, it really is crime prevention, is to help you um, from becoming a victim. And so we, these people, convicted criminals, um, they want to share that story with, with the public. And I think that's really noble on their side to be willing to stand up in front of the community and say, you know what, I've done something wrong, I've paid the price, and now I'm giving back to the community. And that's what, to me, is really cool about this. So if you're just joining us uh, to get people caught up, I'm here with uh, KGW investigative reporter Kyle Boshi. I'm executive producer John Tierney, and we are discussing uh, Kyle's crime confession series, uh, which is his uh, series of interviews with um, people who are convicted of crimes that affect a lot of people in our community, credit card, uh, thief, uh, we're going to talk about a convicted car uh, thief in just a, a minute here. And this all kind of stemmed from a project Kyle did a few months ago where we sent questionnaires to home burglars uh, who are currently serving time in uh, various prisons around uh, the state of Oregon. And they wrote out questionnaires about what they looked for when targeting homes uh, to burglarize. And if you want to get caught up on that story, I posted a link about 10 minutes ago in the comments uh, with a link to that. We also invite anyone to join the comments. If you have questions for Kyle or myself, ask them in the comments. And Kyle, I actually have one here from Debbie Gunther, and she says or asks, what are your opinions about companies such as LifeLock? You know, um, he actually thought that LifeLock was good. Mm -hmm. um, he thought that that type and of monitoring. What are these companies? Help? Well, really, it's fraud protection, right? And, and even some credit card companies offer this free service as well will they notify you if there's some unusual behavior be it a location where your credit card is being used uh, uh, maybe a purchase that just stands out that's just like that's not Kyle Boshi buying this or doesn't seem right so they'll call you and say hey something's not quite right um, he actually by name suggested LifeLock as a good service to use and, and a lot of these are kind of subscription based where you've got to pay a little money um, but it's a form of protection that you wouldn't otherwise have so good question and in this case um, you know Kevin Hawk said that that's actually a good thing um, and what are, I mean, if you don't want to or can't afford to subscribe to one of these uh, fraud protection services, you know, what are, what are some simple things that everyone should be doing when it comes to protecting their finances? Well, he talked a lot about just checking your statements on a regular basis, and I think that's something that we can all do, and it doesn't take much. I mean, you can, with, you know, the online features now, you can regularly check your statements to make sure there's no unusual purchases going on. And just kind of being aware, you know, I think that's an important part of it as well. What kind of information is out there and what are you doing to protect that information? Um, these are all really valuable tips. Um, the, the piece tonight is, is really interesting in that we're kind of moving now into auto theft. And, mm -hmm. you know, you may not think of, oh gosh, is my car going to be there in the morning? But it happens. Um, we found that a car is stolen in the U.S. every 45 seconds. So it is a common crime, and there are some obvious things you can do to protect yourself. In this case, um, we talked to a professional auto thief. Uh, he figures over the years he's stolen probably 75 cars and trucks around the Portland metro area. Um, he described in great detail uh, you know, what type of cars he was looking for, how he was looking for cars, how he got into cars, how he stole them. And listen to this. There's no rhyme or reason when I picked the cars that I picked. Everything from classic vehicles to broken down Hondas. The big trucks are very, very easy. There's only so many key cuts. You know, you'd think with a thirty or forty thousand dollar vehicle that it'd be difficult, but the the ignition system on them is just a. There's only so many key cuts. So I think what surprised me listening to him talk about what kind of cars he steals, even covering these things, I always think that these car thieves go for like old Honda Civics you hear, old right. Honda Accords. Which are typically top of the list, right? right? Old when it comes Subarus, to stolen vehicles. Because you can you can get in and, and, and kind of shave down keys really easily. But what he told you is that 
he kind of didn't discriminate. New cars, old cars, big cars, little cars, luxury cars. Talk right. a little more about that. And so this is David McCoy that we talked to. Um, he is no longer in prison. Uh, he's got his life back on track and is working hard to keep it on track. And, and again, he was looking to give back to the community by kind of sharing his story. Um, yeah, in his case, unfortunately, you know, for much of his life, he, he's been battling an addiction. And so this was, this was feeding a drug habit, basically. But, um, you know, he started years ago and, and basically it was a crime of opportunity. It was a joy ride. And then it became a business opportunity. Um, and then he had some other struggles he was dealing with. So he, he really has, as far as the motivation, there have been a number of triggers in his life. But, um, you know, in, in talking to him, it, it just really was surprising in, I think how accessible some cars are. I mean, people, a lot of people, A, don't lock their car, and, and um, I think he calls it lock boxing. I'll have to check. But basically, you know, checking the, mm-hmm. the handles on a door to see if it's open or not. And, and he would describe just going through neighborhoods and checking those door handles. And oftentimes, if they'd be open, he'd go inside and see what he could find right away. And what I learned is, you know, people leave spare keys in their car more often than you may mm-hmm. think. Um, which, the valet key. That's the one that surprised me. But yeah. I, I mean, it does surprise me a little bit that people would have an extra set of keys. But um, if you do, <laughs> get them out of there. That, that would certainly help to protect you. Um, so the question has kind of been raised, how, we fi- how do we find these people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because obviously it is... You know, for them to come forward, explain what they've done, and then share information with the community right in front of the spotlight on camera, it, it, you know, it's, it's a bold move, and we certainly appreciate them doing so. These two, um, we actually went back to our original source from the burglar story, a gentleman um, who helps in uh, rehab um, and helps people who get out of prison get their lives straight and, and have a strong foundation to work with. And basically went back to him and said, listen, we were so successful with this burglar store. Can you help us as we expand on this and look for others who may be um, able to share their experiences? And so he lined us up with um, uh, Kevin Hawk, the, uh, the former credit card thief, identity thief. And then um, also through David McCoy, the car thief as well. And so through that, we were able to get some, some great interviews. So there's a couple of comments on our Facebook page that are interesting to me. Uh, Marilee Welsh, she said, pointed out, this is a good point. The ID thief who's actually stealing the number is not the only criminal involved in this whole process. You know, she said once the card number is stolen, he goes shopping. What does he do with the things he buys? So, you know, how do people kind of make money off this? And, and talk a little bit too about your reporting about where these kind of credit card numbers can end up. Right. So uh, we talked with, with Kevin a little bit about what happened after he, he bought all these items from these uh, department stores. And he'd work with what's called... Um, uh, a booster and basically I, I think that terminology is correct he 'd basically steal the stuff and then he 'd sell it to somebody right mm-hmm. and and oftentimes it it was maybe half the value of the, the actual product, but he 'd get something in return, usually cash um, or or some type of debit card that he could use or credit card um, and then that person would go on and sell it on the online market, the black market, mm-hmm. or they 'd ship it overseas. Um, Sometimes they'd be really specific in what they're looking for. Other times he would just go looking for high-end purses or clothing that he knew could be sold to somebody. Um, but that's typically the way it would work is, is he'd steal it and then sell it off to somebody for cash. And then there's, there's also a kind of whole subset of criminals in these uh, with stolen credit card numbers who don't enlist you know, waiters and whatnot, but they actually can get credit card numbers online. How does a person... How do you get a credit card number without ever like seeing the card? Right. Um, so he said a couple ways. One, through friends, they would be able to just provide this information. Or, you know, you can also, as we've learned in previous stories, you can buy them online. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's kind of this uh, criminal underworld where they share this information readily and sell it. And so you can go online and, and buy just literally hundreds of names with their background information, including social security number and, and sometimes even credit card numbers. So. That, that stuff is out there, uh, and as a consumer, that's, that's where it really comes into trying to protect yourself as best you can. Mm-hmm. A woman named Amy Wilbur wrote a little story on the, in the comments here. She said she had her debit card uh, taken by a waitress. She went to New York City, I guess the waitress she's saying, with people's credit cards. When Amy was in the restaurant, she thought some, the woman was acting strangely with our credit card, but she didn't confront her as she thought he was ju- she was just being overly paranoid. She says, I wish I could have now. I mean, that kind of speaks. You want to think the best of people. You don't want to right. assume that your hardworking waiter or waitress is stealing your credit card number because by far the vast majority of them sure. are not. Sure. So how do you kind of balance the paranoia or being vigilant with just 
being a decent person. Well, and it's kind of your comfort level, right? I mean, if you really want to be uh, vigilant and you want to follow them and watch them swipe it and then have them hand it to you, that's you know probably the extreme side of things. Mm-hmm. But but you know that they're not taking a picture of it, both sides, and then sending it off to a criminal mm-hmm. um, or some kind of scanning device. I mean, that's the other way they do it sometimes is they have like a handheld scanning device. Mm-hmm. So when they take it, they'll just scan it and that copies all the information as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of your own personal comfort level on how, how extreme you want to take this. Right. And it kind of speaks, it's, it's not realistic in a lot of cases at a lot of restaurants to follow, you know, someone as they scan your card. So this kind of really speaks to the importance of being vigilant when it comes to looking at your credit card statement. Don't wait for the end of the month to look at it. You know, check your statement. Uh, I think you've talked to some people who say they check their statements every single day or right. their, their transaction logs. You know, if you want to get some of these uh, credit monitoring services, um, well, you should even be vigilant when you're doing those. Go with reputable ones, you right. know, ones that don't sell your information to a third party. Yeah. Hey, the one thing I want to add is, is we're kind of looking for your help at this point because we want to know where to take this next. We really hope this is kind of an ongoing series called Crime Confessions where we go out and we find somebody who's been convicted of a crime and is now willing to share their stories. And so we've kind of been brainstorming where to go next. Again, you know, we started out with burglars. Um, we've done credit card theft. We've done car theft. Um, we've talked about uh, maybe like package theft as a possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe shoplifting, but really, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out something that, that would be beneficial to you. And so that's really where we're kind of soliciting, um, you know, your help is that we want you to, to tell us what you'd, li- what you'd like to find out, who you'd like to hear from, what type mm-hmm. of criminal, what type of crime should we explore? Because I think this, there really is an opportunity here for us to, um, you know, learn something new as a community and prevent crimes from happening. So if you've got any ideas, definitely send them to us. Yeah, and you can... Right at any time, uh, comment on our Facebook page, send a message to our Facebook page. Our wonderful social media team, who's behind the camera right now, is always monitoring that. Hi, Crystal. Uh, and uh, I also just wrote a comment on this Facebook thread uh, with our email address, investigators at kgw.com. That goes to Kyle, myself, a couple other people on our team who work on these stories. So please send us your uh, ideas of where you think we should take our reporting, whether it's related to this crime confession series or, or in general. We... Uh, Tips are the kind of lifeblood of how we generate stories. It's our number one source for the stories that end up on KGW News. Uh, and speaking of that, tell us when we can watch your car thief story. Right. So tonight at 11 o'clock on KGW, we're going to have the, the latest installment of this crime confession series. This is when we talk to David McCoy, and he really shares um, some great insight uh, about how he broke into cars, uh, how he stole cars, and then what you can do to protect your, yourself. And some of them, I mean, we're not talking like, you know, hundreds of dollars that you need to spend here. Some of them are pretty basic, which I think it's great information. And it, to hear him tell the story is something else. So here's kind of a preview of what's coming up tonight. Tonight, from a home burglar to a credit card thief. I was surprised at how easy it was. Criminals confessing their crime. They have no idea. Now, Kylie Boshi exposes the tricks of a car thief. My name is David McCoy, and I'm a car thief. What he looks for. Is it hard to steal cars? You would think it would be. Pretty simple. The big trucks are very easy. What he avoids. I'm not even going to go near the car. Exclusive insider tips to protect your car. It's best to pay the extra 50 bucks and have it done right. Crime Confessions, tonight at 11. So again, tonight, 11 o'clock on KGW Crime Confessions. If you've got any ideas for uh, ideas that we should pursue in this crime confession series, please send them to us, message us, um, whatever it takes. But we'd love to have you engaged in this conversation and participating, and uh, we hope you'll tune in tonight. Yeah. You can always email us at investigators at kgw.com. Email address is there in the comments if you need to scroll down to find it. Uh, And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see Kyle's piece tonight at 11. Great. Thanks.